Hi, I'm Jeannie. Welcome to Mimi Craft, your home for all things creative and DIY on a budget. I make all the mistakes so you don't have to. If this is your first time watching, welcome! I hope you find something here today that makes you want to stick around. To my subscribers, a big thank you. Great to have you back. If you've been watching my videos but haven't yet subscribed, please take a few seconds to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. It's the best way to support my channel so that I can keep bringing you this content. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you know every time a new video drops. Let's get started. The first thing I'm making today is a small vanity tray. I'm starting with 35 tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to glue them together to make the base of the tray. As you can see, I'm using a square. This is the absolute best method to ensure that you get these blocks really, really straight and level. I decided to use wood glue because it gives me a little bit of work time, but it does dry fairly fast and it will make this tray much stronger than a lot of other glues. This glue, however, does not dry clear, so be careful to clean up any glue that seeps out between the blocks. With either a wet paper towel, I like to use um, wipes. The most difficult part of this project is definitely just waiting for the glue to dry, but be patient. You'll get much better results if you just leave it alone and let it set up. Now I'm gluing blocks on their narrow end to make a wall all the way around this tray. Again, using the square to keep things perfectly uh, level and plumb. Now, these are Dollar Tree blocks, so they're not real consistent in their sizing. So you're going to see as we round the corner up here, I'm going to end up with a little bit of a problem. You can see by the pencil line here that I had to cut one of the blocks to properly fit. I used a pair of miter shears. You might be able to use some wire cutters or a miter saw to cut those um, to cut the blocks if you run into the same problem. It wasn't that difficult to get through. Now I'm rounding the corner into the home stretch. Now I'm placing beads all around the wall of the base. These are wood beads. I'm using a, a special bottle with the needle tip applicator. I found these at Hobby Lobby. There were, I think, six in a pack for about five bucks, but really good for small applications like this. I just put a little bit of the glue around each hole and then place the bead down. one bead at each seam for a total of 18 beads. Next, I glued some blocks end to end, laid them up on the skinny side. There's gonna be seven blocks total. We're gonna be building a wall for the second story. You're gonna have two rows of seven and two rows of two. Again, using the square to keep things in perfect position. Time to put this box together. Just a little bit of glue on each end and push firmly.
Next I put glue deep into the hole of each one of these beads just to give it some uh, extra security. I then placed more glue on top of the beads so I could add the next layer. And I actually flipped this over and put it on top of the layer. You could do it either direction, it really doesn't matter. And this is how it looks in my bathroom. This box can really be used to display anything. It can even be used as a riser. On to the next project. This is going to be a 5x7 picture frame. You're going to start out by placing 21 blocks together. You're going to place them on, on the wide side and the long side alternating. And again for this I'm using my needle tip applicator bottle. I'm wiping off any extra glue with a wet wipe. The short sides are made with nine blocks in the same order. And now I'm using the square to assemble all four sides. This is a 5x7 frame that I purchased at Dollar Tree. I chose this one because it had a really flat frame going all the way around. Here I'm bending up the little tabs that hold the back in. Actually it's best to just take them out. We're going to remove the back and the glass. And then we're going to paint this. This is the back side of the frame. I actually used white chalk paint as a primer. This is plastic and um, paint doesn't really want to stick to it unless you have a primer underneath. You're going to be painting the entire back and then just around the edge of the front you're going to want to do all the sides as well. Now I'm using a khaki color paint. I wanted something that would blend in well with the blocks. Actually I mixed my own color. It doesn't look too bad on camera 
but in person it kind of looked like a combination between a, a bad spray tan and hepatitis. So you're going to see later on a little bit different color, and it's just the original khaki from Apple Barrel. Here I am doing the rim around the front. There's the khaki. I use some uh, matte Mod Podge to seal everything up because paint really likes to peel off of plastic. Next, I decided to make a new back. I took a piece of canvas board from Dollar Tree, Crafter Square, and just traced it. I made sure that it was square before I cut it out because, you know, Dollar Tree. And I used a utility knife. I cut this from the back but it would be way better to cut it from the front. You'll get a much smoother edge because the front is canvas, which is a fabric. Next, I put in the glass and then I put the tabs in before I put the back on. This new back is a lot thicker and you're going to have to have the tabs in ahead of time. And there's the frame, dirty glass and all. I chose a sawtooth hanger, the kind that you tap into the frame itself, but I didn't want to tap into those blocks. They're not strong enough, plus I needed the hanger to rise up above the Dollar Tree frame. So I tapped it in to one of those wood blocks and then glued that wood block to the wood frame. This workout worked out absolutely perfectly. It was nice and strong and um, in a real good position. This is what it looks like hanging on the wall. On to some lanterns. I started with six blocks and put double-sided tape on the back of each one. This is just to stabilize the very first um, layer before gluing. I put the blocks down on my work surface. You can't put them on paper because the paper is going to stick to them. What we're going to do is make a hexagon. And I am doing this by eye. I just keep moving the blocks around and when the corners touch exactly at the points it gives you a near perfect um, hexagon. Here I'm just making sure that my battery operated candle will fit inside the shape that I made. Again we'll be using wood glue and my special little glue bottle. Now what you want to do with this next row is take the very center of a block and put it right on the corner where two blocks come together. You can mark your box if you want to but then you're going to have to go back and um, take the markings off. I eyeballed it because I didn't want to have to go through that. You do whatever you need to do to get them straight. I'm just getting an idea here of where they should go before I glue them. If you have the blocks in the correct position, opposite sides will be parallel to one another. Those little corners will match up exactly and the space between each one of those um, blocks will be exactly the same. And here I am just gluing them down. Kind of a delicate balance between using enough glue but not so much that you have to wipe it off because it's kind of hard 
to get in there and wipe this stuff off without knocking the other blocks off. As difficult as it is to be patient, try to let this dry before you attempt the next layer. This is the placement of the next layer. You place it exactly the same as the first. This time centering each block over the opening in the layer before, the front edge of the block right above the points of those blocks underneath. It's best explained just by watching what I'm doing. Here I am just straightening things out. Check in with a straight edge to make sure everything is where it should be. And then I place something heavy over it until it dried. You should probably have done that for the first layer too. Now that it's dry, I'm going to pick it up and, and show you how things are lining up. When you look at it sideways, the blocks are going to be parallel one to another. I'm going to continue doing this until you have three rows. You can see here that I have one set on the left and one set on the right. The set on the left is the bottom, the set on the right is the top. And here I am putting them together. Now you can glue them if you'd like, or you can leave them separate to make putting the candle in easier. If you want to make your lantern taller, this is the point at which you do that. What you do is you start layering blocks exactly on top instead of coming out from the row before. Again, just watch the video and you can see what I mean. This will just make it taller in the middle. It will not continue to make it wider and wider. It'll make it a cylinder shape. That's what it looks like with two extra rows and with, I don't know, a bazillion more rows. Here are several all lit up at night. On the far left, I actually took the lid from one and a whole one on top of that to get that kind of a look. I used battery operated candles that I purchased at Dollar Tree. Here's a vignette of all three projects. And here's a little vignette with that tray used as a riser. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments below if there are any other projects that you would like to see on my channel. Also let me know if you'd like to see some more Tumbling Tower projects. If you enjoyed what you saw today, please take a minute to like, subscribe, and share. Until the next one, bye!